Hello, this is Talking Europe on France 24. I'm Catherine Nicholson. Now, you might be breathing a sigh of relief right now that this pandemic year is finally drawing to a close, but the number of coronavirus infections each day in this continent is still very much a matter of concern. Now, you'll probably recall that Italy was the country that first took drastic measures in Europe in the spring, with its daily death toll peaking at more than 900 people on March the 28th. Well, Italy is once again struggling to keep COVID-19 infections under control, much like many of its neighbours. And while citizens there worry about their health, the economy has taken a hit that's slightly above average for the Eurozone countries. And Italy is due to be the biggest single recipient of emergency EU grants and loans. Well, today I'll be discussing all of that and perhaps more with uh, Italy's Minister for European Affairs, Vincenzo Amendola, who joins us. Uh, thank you very much for being on the programme. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'd like to start off with the pandemic itself, uh, the second uh, wave very much with us in Europe, in Italy. Uh, as I said in my introduction, the daily number of people dying from COVID-19 in Italy has been rising alarmingly in recent times, getting very close to the peak of late March. Uh, would you agree that it could be time to bring in more restrictions in Italy to limit the spread of this virus? Uh, during the second wave, what we have done is concretely to organize with the region different approach in terms of uh, restriction. There are different regions that are using different measures. As far that we see in this during the last days, the, the line of contagion is going down. Of course, the death toll is quite uh, important and uh, make us concerned. So we are going to, to, a, to, a, to a flexible uh, uh, restriction depending on the region, but the maximum alarm for, for the government and the parliament is still on the table. Indeed, we are working to, to con to contribute to stop down this contagion, like all the European countries. Uh, a bit of uh, good news in recent days. Uh, the European Commission president uh, has talked about the first vaccines being available for Europeans in January 2021. Uh, we do know, however, that the quantities of these vaccines available will be small at first. Uh, how is Italy going to be prior prioritising its vaccine programme? The Ministry of Health is going to present to the Parliament at the beginning of December the plan, the plan for distribution and in terms for how, how many will start, which kind of category will be first uh, under the vaccination. But let me say that we are very happy for what the European Union is doing in terms of coordination, not just bilaterally with many countries, but as a whole. And this is the first lessons that we learn after March first wave of pandemia. So COVID-19 nowadays is making our country more united, coordinating uh, closure, coordinating in terms of medical treatment and also coordinating in terms of uh, going together with the vaccination. This is a good element uh, after all the tragedy that we lived since March last March. We're just staying on the vaccines. A recent opinion poll found that almost half of Italians would actually be hesitant about taking a coronavirus vaccine. Uh, the number of people hesitant has increased in Italy from back in May. Are you confident that enough uh, people will take the vaccine to make it effective in the population? Scientists say about 70% of people need to take it. Absolutely, yes. I mean, I, the feeling of our people is very concerned for not just for the risk for their life, but also for what we are living since months. So the, the unity that the European Union show was an element that bring in the poll up the European feelings and support. So in terms of vaccination, uh, our country would be united in order to achieve this important way out from the tunnel. And uh, Italy, of course, as I said, set to be uh, the biggest single recipient state of EU funding via this unprecedented EU recovery uh, fund. Uh, your Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte has described the funding as an opportunity to build a better Italy. Uh, however, a Bank of Italy economist has warned that some of the issues that have been holding Italy's economy back to do with productivity cannot be solved uh, with, with monetary policy by throwing money at them. Um, do you believe that perhaps your ambitions could be a little too ambitious for this money? No, I don't think so, because what we have decided uh, 
at, on the, the last European Council of 21st of July is to use the MFF, the European budget, and the next generation uh, resources as European. So means all the countries going to invest in the same line, uh, green, digital, social cohesion. So what we are doing with different amounts, depending on the country, in Italy, got it the, 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 the biggest amount is that all European is going to, to have a more resilient economy. And of course, we, we need to invest public investment in Italy to go out from uh, some elements that even pre-COVID time were not giving competitiveness. They were not giving also social cohesion in many fields. So mm. what we are doing is a, a European maneuver, a European fiscal common policy that will strengthen all the European market. Now, the uh, Italian economy, I mentioned in my introduction, has been hit slightly worse than the Eurozone average. Uh, the Italian economy now 4.5% smaller than it was at the end of 2019, 4.3% for the Eurozone average. Uh, when do you expect uh, that you will be able to recover to end of 2019 levels and beyond? What we saw already during between the first wave and the second wave, there was a good impression from the real economy, Italian real economy, to react. Then the second wave, of course, make us many restrictions. What we are doing is coordinated with the European Commission in terms of national budget, in terms also of European regulation because the stimulus that is coming from the national fiscal policy is related to the common decision that we are taking all together. So I think this is the best way. We have to be united in what we are planning and united also to strengthen the market union, to strengthen the European economy, because this is the best way for each of us, each of 27, to go out uh, from the crisis in a shorter time. I'd just like to move on to um, an, a very specific issue regarding the next European budget, or MFF as it's known. Um, it, that budget is currently somewhat on ice after Poland and Hungary vetoed it. Uh, just to explain for our viewers once again, as we have discussed on our programme before, uh, Hungary and Poland don't want to accept new EU uh, rules about the transfer of EU funds being conditional on member states meeting rule of law commitments. Uh, Mr Amendola, uh, EU leaders have talked about finding a compromise with Hungary and Poland. What compromise would be acceptable to the Italian government? We stick on the, on the agreement that we have done. I mean, in the uh, 21st of July summit, when we signed uh, the agreement on the MFF and Next Generation, was already clear that we wanted to introduce uh, this conditionality. And then there was German presidency compromise with the parliament, with the commission. So it's clear from the beginning that you are belonging, we are belonging to a community that is not just sharing the resources, but is sharing values. And then there is also the European Court of Justice in case a, a country feels that uh, uh, as decision that is not com concerning mm. their national issue. So in my opinion, uh, there could be a reflection, discussion, but this conditionality must be included in our way of working. Now, another very pressing issue for the European Union, Mr. Amendola, Ursula von der Leyen, the European Commission president, said in the last few days that, frankly, I cannot tell you today whether there will be a deal with the United Kingdom. Now, considering there are just five weeks to go before the UK's transition period ends, can we consider this a failure by European negotiators? Absolutely no. Uh, we were united, all 27, supporting Michel Barnier, that did a great job as all our confidence to go and to negotiate on the base of our interest as European, our internal market rules, our uh, rules in terms of fishery, in terms of defending the Irish uh, agreement that is based on our identity. So the negotiator and the commission, they did all their job and we are united until the end to support their work. And what's your personal sense at the moment? Do you believe, have you heard that a deal is imminent or do you sense that time could just run out? As you know, in the negotiation, you, you cannot um, predict anything. It's what is important and uh, London knows it because it was also the same history months ago 
for the other uh, agreement uh, is that Europeans are united. I think this is the best um, elements that we can show in the negotiation. We are united, confident, confident on our identity, on our future. And I hope that this bilateral relation between European and UK could start in the next future with the best uh, step. And I mean, if the, it does come to it and there's a no deal Brexit, January the 1st, uh, Italy, of course, not quite as on the front line as a country like France, for example. But um, how bad do you fear that the damage would be from a no deal Brexit for Italy? Ah, well, we think that, that there will be some consequences for everybody, because, for example, in terms of trade, 80 percent of our goods are passing via France to, to Great Britain. So. The, the, the unity among the 27 is based also on the unity of our internal market in the value chain that are working together. So, but I don't see many, many benefits to have a, a, a no deal or to have a, mm -hmm. a bad deal. So in, in this sense, we are moving all together because we are confident of our necessity. All right, Vincenzo Amendola, Italian Minister for European Affairs, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thanks to you for watching as well. Hope to see you soon on Talking Europe.